We begin today the Gemara right at the last few words on Daf Nun Tes Summit Base. Im Hoya Makira. The Gemara quoted a Braise before that speaks about the wife's obligation to nurse the babies. And it says that even in a case where she was divorced, but if the baby recognizes the mother and will only nurse milk from the mother and not from anyone else, so then he could force her to continue feeding these babies. It's, it's, otherwise, it's a sakana. The baby won't eat anything. So the Gemara now asks, at the top of Dav Samech, right at the top, Dav Samech Amar Aleph, At Kama, at what age do we say that the baby is old enough to recognize the mother, and therefore we have to, the mother has to nurse the baby? If the baby is three months old, she recognizes the mother. Shmuel Amar, and Shmuel says, Even a baby 30 days old will recognize her mother. Rab Yitzchak Amar Rab Yechenen. Rab Yitzchak says in the name of Rab Yechenen, Chamishim Yeh, a baby that's fifty days old. Amar Rab Simi Bar Abaya, Halacha Ker Rab Yitzchak. We pass on like Rab Yitzchak. Shama Mishum Rab Yechenen. That's said in the name of Rab Yechenen that it's fifty days. So now the Gemara asks here, Bish Loi Mer Rab Ver Rab Yechenen. The argument between Rab and Rab Yechenen, whether it's three months or fifty days, that we can understand. Kochad Vachad Kichurfe. Each one of them is estimating. The baby, her understanding of how sharp she is, how quickly she'll recognize his mo- her mother. Elo Shmuel, but Shmuel that says that after 30 days, a baby 30 days old will recognize the mother and will not nurse from anyone else. Something like this, is this really possible? That a baby that's that young, 30 days old, will recognize the mother? The Gemara is asking that this is not something that uh, is really possible. So the Gemara says, Ki also, Rami when Rami by Yecheskel came, so Omar, he said, Do not listen to these halachas that my brother Yehuda repeated in the name of Shmuel, because Shmuel, regarding this, this is what Shmuel said, as long as we can see that the baby recognizes the mother and will not feed from anyone else, then the mother will have to feed her. Meaning, Shmuel said, there's no age for this. We can't give any particular age from three months, 50 days. You have to just see what's the story with the particular baby if she recognizes her mother. And the Gemara brings a story that happened. There was an incident over here of a Grusha, a woman that was divorced. She did not want to feed the baby. And she came in front of, in front of Shmuel. And the, so they asked Shmuel, what should they do? Could they force her to feed the baby? It's a pretty sad story here. So Amalei la Rabdimi bar Yosef. So he says to Rabdimi bar Yosef, Zil Botka, go and inspect the matter. Go see if this baby will only eat from the mother, or she can, or the baby can eat from someone else. So Azal he went Oisva bedarad the nashi. He sat the mother amongst a row of ladies. Veshak lebra, and she took the son, the baby. Vekomahad lealayu, and she went from. From uh, woman to woman to see if the baby will nurse from them. Kimote legaba when the baby, the son came to the mother, have his kamasvila apot. The baby recognized the mother, looked up at the mother's face. So this mother never didn't want to feed her baby. Kivashtinhi lein amine. She covered her eyes from the baby. Why? Oh my law. So it's never had a sad, sad story here. She didn't want to feed the baby. Oh my law. So. Rav Dimi, by Yosef, tells her, now you, I see the baby will only feed from you, pick up your eyes, pick up your son and take him with you. It's your obligation, your responsibility to feed him. So Kumar now asks, what if the baby is blind? How would the baby recognize her mother or his mother? The smell and the taste of the milk is something that the baby will recognize. In Abraisa, we learned about a baby nursing. Yainik, Tinik, Vahailach, a baby nurses from the mother, Ad Esrim, Varba, Chaydish, for 24 months. Mikan, Vahailach, later than this, Kiyainik, Shekets. It's like the baby is nursing from something that's impure, it's, it's not, not, not allowed. Devere, Rabbi Layaza. This is Rabbi Layaza's opinion. Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Shua says, I feel Arba, Vachomishonim. The child could continue feeding even to the age of four and five years old. Piddish, however, if the child or the baby separated from the mother, and the Gemara will soon explain what is it considered to be separated, but if he already stopped nursing, so then, 
after he was already 24 months old, he separated, he stopped nursing, and v'chazar, and now he wants to nurse again, k'yoyinik shekets. Then he says that it, yeah, it's like the baby is nursing something that's impure. But otherwise, the baby could continue nursing until four, even four and five years old. No, that's two years. So the Gemara will now explain the details of what it said here. Oh, Mama, so what did it just say here? Rabbi Yezza just said, Mikan ve'elach k'yoyinik shekets. Past the age, or age of two years, you're not allowed to nurse when the mother's milk gets impure. In other words, midrabanan. There's a gzayda midrabanan and it's not allowed. So the Gemara brings a b'raise that says the opposite. But Amini, I'll ask you the following question. Yochoyl, the b'raise says, I would think, yehei cholo mahalche shtayim tomi. That the milk coming from a human being that walks on two, from a mother. I would think that this milk should be tomi, should be forbidden to eat. And vidinu. And I'll bring you the following kalvachaymer from the milk of an impure animal that it should be not allowed. And the, the Kavachayimah goes as follows. Ma behemeh, if when it comes to a behemeh, and we're speaking over here about a behemeh which is tome. Shehikalto b'mago, and when it comes to a behemeh, we're lenient when it comes to touching her. Meaning, a, be, be, a behemeh tmeo, when the behemeh is still alive, there is no tome with this behemeh. But nevertheless, hechmarto b'chalovo. We are stringent when it comes to the milk of an impure animal, of a non-kosher animal. So Adam, when it comes to a human being, by a human being, we find the stringency that there is a concept of tume for a woman when she's alive. If she becomes a nida, of course, she'll be tummy. So we see that there's a certain stringency regarding a mother. So most definitely, you should be stringent regarding her milk, that you should be not, not be allowed to eat from the, or drink, that is, from the mother's milk. So, so therefore, the Gemara says, we learn out from a Pasuk where it says, Esa gomel kimale geirahu, that a gomel, a camel, is not kosher. And it says here in the Pasuk, the extra word of hu. And I learned from this, hu tome, only the camel is tome, which includes also the milk of the camel, which is not allowed to eat. Rashi actually, actually brings the, that there's in the title there, it says gomel, gomel twice. So we learn out that even the milk of the camel is not allowed. But ve'en cholav mahal cheshtayim tome. But the milk of a mother, even when the baby is not nursing anymore, the milk of a mother is not going to be forbidden to drink. It's allowed, you're allowed to drink the milk of a, of a mother, even a, an adult. And then the Braise continues, Yochel, I would think, that only when it comes to milk, I would say that it's allowed to drink. Because milk is something that is not equally forbidden from any animal. The milk is only forbidden if it comes from a non-kosher animal. Milk that comes from a non-kosher animal, of course, is allowed. So maybe that's why I say that we're more lenient with milk, that milk that comes from a human being is also allowed. And I will not exclude blood. And I would say regarding blood, that blood that comes from a human body, and this is something where blood of any animal is forbidden. So maybe I should say that the blood from a human body should also be forbidden. Talmud Loimar, the Pasuk says, who? From this word, who I also learn out, who tome, that it's who, that is tome. It's all from the same Pasik. And says there earlier, Rashi says earlier, and some say that it comes from another who that's earlier in that Pasik there. So that also excludes it. The blood that comes from a human being walking on two feet is not going to be forbidden to eat. You're allowed to eat the blood from a human body. So the point is, what do we see in this Braisa? Is an adult allowed to eat the milk that comes from a woman? So before we said that past the age of two years old, or even according to Rabbi Shua, once the baby stopped nursing, past the age of two years old, you're not allowed. And here in this price, it says that it is allowed. So the Gemara answers, Vamerav Sheishes. Oh, this is actually part of the question still. One second, one more point here. Vamerav Sheishes, Rav Sheishes said, regarding the blood that we said that is allowed, I feel the mitzvah's perisha eimboy. Even perisha, which means midrabanan. Even the rabbanan did not decree to not eat from this blood. So what's the story with the milk? So the Gemara explains, there's no contradiction here. Loi kashia, this is not a question. Ha the potish. Once you have the milk that was pumped out from the mother's body and the milk is in a bottle, so then you're allowed to eat, eat drink, even milk from a, from a mother, even a, an adult. Ha the loi potish, but if the milk has not been pumped out from the mother and you to, 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 to suck the milk directly from a, from a mother when, when a person is an adult, that is not allowed. That the Braise before said the expression kiyonik shekets. It's like you're, you're nursing something that's not allowed. But now the Gemara comes back 
to the halacha regarding blood from a human body, v'chilufa bedam. Regarding the blood from a human body, the halacha will actually be the exact reverse. Kedetanya, as we learned in Abraise, dam she'al gabi kikar. A person is, is eating bread, he bites into the bread, and he notices on the bread that there's blood. It came from his mouth, from his body. So the question now is, what do you do with that blood? Are you allowed to eat it or not? So the Braise says, Geiriroi v'oichloi. So you have to scrape it off, and then you eat the bread. So in other words, you're not allowed to eat this blood. Meaning, once the blood comes out of your body, then you're not allowed to eat it. Shebena shinayim, but blood that on your, in your gums, between your teeth, it's in your mouth. Maititza, you can, you can uh, suck it, you can swallow it. Ve'ena choishish, and you don't have to be concerned about it. This whole thing of not eating blood from a human body is only a gzeda mid rabbanon. Menatayda, the isra of eating blood is only from a behemah. Mid rabbanon, there were guys are not to eat blood that separates from the human body because you could be confused with the blood from an animal. But if it's in your body, in your mouth, there was no gzeda, you're allowed to drink it. Oh, mama, going back to the opinion, the second opinion we had in the Braise before, Rabbi Shua, Oimer, Rabbi Shua said, that if the baby did not stop nursing, she could continue, or he could continue nursing until the age of four or five years old. And there's a different Braise, Rabbi Tanya, Rabbi Shua, Oimer, here Rabbi Shua gives a different uh, amount of time or a different age. He says, even if the, 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 the child is an adult old enough that he carries a, a, a bundle, a bag on his shoulders, he can still continue nursing from his mother. So is it four or five years old, or is it this age of year of Chavilasi al Says the Gemara, It's both the same age, four or five years old, is when a child is carrying a bundle on his shoulders. Amr Rav Yasef, Rav Yasef said, Halacha Rabbi Shua. We pass him like Rabbi Shua, that as long as the child did not stop nursing, he could continue nursing even to such an old age. But if the child stopped, so then it's, you, you can't continue. Tanya, the Gemara now here brings another halacha, which is in Hilchas Shabbos. It's related to what we're speaking about. Rab Merine Saime. Rab Merine said, a person that is in a lot of pain and he's, he's moaning and groaning and crying so out of pain on Shabbos. This is speaking about. So, he can suck milk. In order for him to heal himself, Rashi says, it would be by drinking goat's milk. So on Shabbos, you're not allowed to milk on Shabbos, as, as uh, Gemara explains, and Rashi here explains it, that why you're not allowed to milk on Shabbos? Because this is mephatic. Mephatic is just like you're not allowed to take the kernels and separate it from the, the shell of the kernels, breaking it out of its shell. So too, the milk that's inside the animal and nursing it and bringing, taking it out, separating it from its source, is the melacha of mephatic, which is a toilda of dosh, dosh, the threshing. So really the mephatic is not allowed in Shabbos, but for this person which is in pain and he's nursing directly from the goat, so mephatic kalachayat, this is mephatic separating the milk in an unusual manner. Since this person is in pain, Chachamim did not keep their decree in place and therefore it's allowed. Amir Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said about this, Halacha Kerab Mirinis. The Halacha follows what Rav Mirinis said over here. Another Braise, which is also a Halacha in Hilchas Shabbos, and uh, the, the Psak Din regarding this, Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, Nochem Mishgal Yoyme, Nochem Mishgal said, Sinner Sha'olobe Kashkashin. You have a gutter that runs on the roof, and the water gets uh, funneled down in this gutter away from the house. So, what happens if Sha'olobe if, Kashkashin, if you're in Shabbos, you notice that there's straw or grass that got filled up in this gutter. So, now what's going to happen? All the rain is going to spill over on the roof into the house, so it's, it's, you won't be able to live there. So on Shabbos, you're not allowed to pull out this straw and this grass from there. Some say, that, I think the Ran says that the reason is because it's like psik resha. You're cleaning it out and preparing it to be used properly. Not, did I just say psik resha? I meant to say um, makibe patish. That is makibe patish. Okay, and others, others say that it's only awesome with the Rabbanon. So how do you remove this even on Shabbos? So he says, Memachon beragla, you can sort of squeeze it or like remove it by pushing it away with your feet and, and, and doing it in an unusual manner. Again, kalaacha yad, and bitsinah, it should be done in, in, quietly when no one sees you. Bishabbos, it can be done this way in Shabbos. This happens to be a pretty unusual thing. The Gemara says that you can do this, even though it's awesome that Rabbanon, but for this purpose, it could be done as long as it's done quietly. Taisus points out, usually anything that's Asr, even if it's only Asr because of Maris Ayin, because people may see and misjudge what you're doing and misunderstand what you're doing, even Bechadre Chadara, even in, in a place which is very, very private, it's still not allowed. But over here, Taisa says, because people will understand that they won't, they, they see that you're not doing a malachim and a taira, so over here, you're allowed to do this, but sinna. And the ain't a chayshish. 
You don't have to be concerned about this. My time, why? Misaken kalacha yadu. He's fixing this gutter in an unusual manner. Ubemakim seide. In a place where he's going to have such a damage of the rain going into his house, like Gazer Barabanan. Chachamim did not keep their decree in place. Om Rav Yasef, so regarding this, Rav Yasef also said, Halacha kenochem ishgalia. We pass like this braise, nochem ishgalia. Going back to the braise before regarding a baby nursing. Pirish la chesron varba chaydish, after 24 months, according to Rabbi Shua, if the baby stopped nursing already, so then, and he starts nursing again, it's, he's, he's nursing something that's, that's shekets, it's forbidden. The Kamo, what's considered to be stopping to nurse? How long? One day, two days, three days? He said in the name of Shmuel, three days. Ikidamri, others say that he didn't say it in the name of Shmuel, but Tani Rav Yehuda Bar Chavive Kamei Shmuel. Yehuda Bar Chavive, so he taught this halacha in front of Shmuel, Shloi Shiyomim, that if it's three days, it's stopping to nurse. Tani Rav Anon, we learned Nebraise, another halacha regarding a nursing uh, mother. Meinekes, Shemeis Bailo, a mother nursing a baby, and her husband passes away. Betoich Esrin Varba Chaydish, so for the first 24 months, Hadezu Loitis Ares Voloitin Inase. She should not get married, whether only Edison, the first stage of marriage, or full marriage, she should not get married to anyone else while she's still nursing this baby. Ad Esrin Varba Chaydish, until 24 months. So Rashir says she'll get remarried, she becomes pregnant, and once she becomes pregnant, the milk, she won't be able to nurse a baby anymore, and now this baby won't have what to eat, and this New husband, which is not the father of the child, won't necessarily provide, as she says, uh, uh, eggs or milk that's needed for the baby. So therefore she has to wait 24 months to be able to meet, uh, to, to feed, that is, the baby. 24 months we wait. Rab Yehuda says, 18 months is enough time that the mother has to feed the baby. Past that, she can go get married. By the way, it said over here before, Tisaris and Tinase. Not only she shouldn't get married the second stage of marriage, even the first stage of marriage, which is when the wife still lives with her parents. So the reason is because it's exerim the Rabbanon. Really, if it's only Edison, there's no concern that she's going to become pregnant. But nevertheless, Chachamu wa Machmer and said no marriage at all until either 24 or 18 months. Amr Abna Son or others are greatest. Rabbi Yenison said about this, Bar Yosef. The two opinions quoted there are is the same argument between Beshamai and Basil. Shabishami said that it's 24 months you have to wait. The Basil says that you wait 18 months. says, Ani Achriya, I will be Machriya. This term Achriya. Usually it means I have a, an opinion which is a compromise, but over here it actually means that I'll be more lenient about this. The opinion that says that it's 24 months you have to wait because that's how long the baby nurses. So you can really go ahead and get married after 21 months, and I'll explain in a moment why. The opinion that says 18 months, you're allowed to get married after 15 months. What's the reason? The fee because she ain't a hall of nakar. Even a woman that becomes pregnant, the milk does not become undrinkable for the baby. Only after three months of the pregnancy. So even though you need 24 months for the for the child for the baby to nurse, but after 21 months you can get married, even if you get pregnant, but you'll have another three months that the baby will still be able to nurse. Amarole, all it says about this halachic Rabbi Yehuda. We pass in like Rabbi Yehuda that you have to wait 18 months, not more. For me, uh, Rab Chanini said that I can get married after 15 months, like Rab Shem Gamliel said before. Now the Gemara brings a story about this. Arise da Abaya, the worker of Abaya, also came to Abaya, came to Abaya. He wanted to get married to this woman that her husband died and she had a baby. She was nursing the baby. She, he said, he wanted to know if he could marry this woman. How long does he have to wait? Amalei Abaya says, Maole Ores. Or actually, he said to Abaye, Maule Ares Bachamisha Is it enough to wait 15 months and I can get married to her? Amalei. So Abaye says, Yes, you can. And he gave the following reason. Chada number one, the Rab Meir, the Rab Yehuda, Halachak Rab Yehuda. We have the rule when there's an argument between Rab Meir and Rab Yehuda, we pass it like Rab Yehuda. The second point is, Beshamai U Beshilol. Halachak Beshilol. It's also Beshamai and Beshilol that are arguing about this. And Halacha follows Beshilol. And the third point, Vama Ole, Halachak Rab Yehuda. Ola also said clearly that the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. 
And Baal Mar Okve, as we quoted before, Mar Okve said that Li Hitter Rabchanina lost his Lacha Chamisha Sachadoshim. That Rabchanina allowed me to get fully married after 15 months. So therefore, Abaya said, with all of these things that we have here, we could add to this even more. Kol Shekin Da'at Liaris was definitely you that you only want the first stage of marriage to get married to her after 15 months. For sure, it should be allowed. So this was all seemingly a very solid foundation for the Psak Din that Abaya gave his worker to be able to get married after 15 months. But what happens then? Kiyosel Kameh Rav Yosef. Now Abaya came to Rav Yosef and he told him the Psak Din, they passed him, you get married after 15 months. Omalei, Rav Yosef told him, but Rav, Shmuel, the Omri, Tarvayu, Rav and Shmuel both said that Sricha, Lahamten, Esrim, Varbo, Chaydish, that you do have to wait 24 months. And that is 24 months, Chutz Miyayim Shanaylet Boy, that excludes the day that the baby was born, and the Chutz Miyayim Shanisar Sabay, and excluding the actual day that you're getting married. So you didn't pass him right, you didn't know the halacha of Rav and Shmuel. So Abaye now went to, he wanted to find this person, Rod Basre. He went to run after his worker to find him, to tell him that the halach is he's going to have to wait 24 months. So Rod Basre, Tlasa Parsa, he ran after him three Parsa. Vamri Lohab, they say Parsa Bachala, he ran after him one Parsa, but in the sand, and it's very difficult to run in the sand. Veloy mm Adrache, -hmm. and he couldn't reach him. He couldn't tell him this halacha. So after this happened, and Abaye saw that he said the wrong Psakdin, Omar Abaye, Abaye said, Hi, Milse, the Omar Abona. This concept that Rabbanan said, that afile beit bekutche, even such a simple question that someone would ask you, and the question would be beit, an egg, bekutche, together with some kind of a milk, uh, uh, a milk sauce that's made with milk ingredients, and someone asks you a question, am I allowed to eat the egg together with this uh, uh, milchig uh, sauce? Obviously, the answer is yes. What should be the problem? But even if such a simple question, inish, a person should not say that it's allowed to mock him, Rabbi. If he's in the place where his teacher is there, and he should, he should rely, he should ask on his teacher. He shouldn't pask in a city, in a place where he has his teacher there. Uh, Tesis actually argues on this chat that I just said, according to Rashi. Rashi says, even such a simple question that every child knows is allowed, that you can eat the egg together with this milk sauce. The Taisa says, no, it's, if it would be such a simple question like that, you are allowed to pass it in a place where your teacher is. Taisa Bukutcha means when you have an egg that was found in a chicken that was shechted, and you may say, oh, if so, it's, it's like part of the chicken, and therefore you're not allowed to eat it together with the milk, but the halacha is that it is allowed. So that's not actually something which is so simple, but such a kind of a halacha, you could pass in. You, you, would, you would think that you should be able to, that is. You would think you should be able to pass in this even where your uh, teacher is, but it says you should not pass in it where your teacher is. And what's the reason? Not because it looks like that you're not accepting your teacher as a teacher, and you're like, uh, it's, it's a chutzpah, it's a hefkeros, that you're passing in the place where your teacher is. Ella, rather, the reason is because I see what happened to me, Abaya is saying. Because you're not going to have the help of the Ebishter to pass in right. Like it happened with him. He passed in that she could wait 15 months and get married to his worker. And then he found out that he was wrong. That Rav and Shmuel said that you have to wait 24 months. You're not going to have the right to uh, the help of Hashem to make, give the right psaked in. I learned and I knew this halacha that Rav and Shmuel said that you have to wait. When it came to this case and I had to paskin and I was paskin in the same place where my Rebbe was, I ended up paskin wrong and I had all kinds of reasons that I thought I was right, but I ended up I was wrong. We learned. If a mother hires a menekes, a, a, a woman, to nurse her son, or she uh, stopped nursing, even though it was before the 24 months or before the 15 months, she stopped nursing, or the child passed away. So now the question is, the only reason she can't get remarried, she has to wait, is because we, we want the baby to have the mother to be able to nurse, but now that she's not nursing the baby anymore, so if so, she could immediately go and get remarried. So these two Amiraim sovereign lemeved of the Kihomasnita. They wanted to actually paskin like it says in this Braise. Amra Amra Luhu Hai Sapta. So this older woman said to them, Bididi Habov, that I had such a case where I uh, I became an Almana and I had a baby that I was feeding, and I had a question if I can get remarried right away when I was not feeding my baby anymore. And Rav Nachman says, it's not allowed, you still have to wait. 
But the Gemara asks, Aini, but this is not so because of Rav Nachman, we know that the Rav Nachman Paskin, there was an incident with an Almana that came from the house of the Reish Galusa, the head of all the Eden in Golos. They were like the leaders of the Eden there, and they, they, sort of the government leaders that they took care of matters of all the Eden. Uh -huh. And there was an Almana there in the, by this Reish Galusa that there was this question whether in a situation where they, they hired someone to feed the baby, if so, this Almana wanted to get remarried. There's someone hired to take care of it. And over there, Rav Nachman said, it's allowed. She can get remarried. So the Gemara answer is, don't bring a raya from that psak then of Rav Nachman, because Shani be Reish Galusa, it's very different when you're speaking about the Reish Galusa in this place when they hired somebody, whoever you hire to feed the baby will not go back on, on the obligation that they have, that they were hired, because Rashi says the, the people of the Reish Galusa, Rashi's Lashon is, they were scary people, they were very intimidating, and if you're hired, you're not going to back out from your job. So we can rely on the fact that the baby will have what to eat, but in a regular case, we can't necessarily rely on it, so you can't get remarried. Amalu Rav Pape, Rav Papi, so Rav Papi said to these two Amiroim, Rav Pape and Rav Hunabere de Rav Yeshua, Va'ato on loitis berua, and you don't agree to this, that even though the baby died, or the baby has a nurse to feed her, or so on, that still, she, she has to wait, she can't immediately get remarried. But Mehadat Tanya, you don't hold of this from, based on this that we learned in another B'raise, regarding a similar halacha. The halacha is regarding a woman that she has to wait before she goes and gets remarried. So she has to wait if um, after her husband passes away, she has to wait three months in order for us to figure out if she has a baby. Uh -huh. We have to know who the baby, whose baby this is. Is it from the first husband or the second husband? So the Braise there says regarding this halacha to wait, but what happens if the case is This woman that got divorced from her husband, or her husband passed away, we know that she was not with her husband for the past while. She's constantly running back to her father's home. Or there was an anger that was between her and her husband, and she was not living with her husband. Or a case where her husband was in prison. Or her husband, before he passed away, was overseas. Or if her husband was old or sick, and she, she, if she has a baby, it's clear that it's not from this marriage. Or she herself was a barren woman, or an older woman, or an islandess, or even a, a, a katana that can't give birth. Or another case where it's clear that it's not from the previous marriage, a woman that miscarries after her husband passes away. So now if she's having a baby, we know that it, it comes from the, the new marriage. Or any case where a woman can't give birth. Rameh says, nevertheless, you still have to wait three months before you get remarried. Because this is exeter, chazal, they, they didn't want you to have any confusion of one case to another, so you always have to wait three months no matter what. Rabbi Yaisi allows that you could go and get married immediately, whether Edison or Nisuin. And who's the Allah like? We have the rule that any time Rab Meir made any decrees and we're stringent about something, we pass him like Rab Meir. So therefore, what Rav Papi is saying is, just like there, we don't make a distinction, even though there's no concern that we won't know who the baby is from, but nevertheless, you have to wait. The same would be regarding the nursing. Even if it's clear that this, the mother's not nursing anymore, but nevertheless, they don't want you to make a distinction. When they heard this, they answered, you're right, we weren't aware of this b'raisa, of this halacha, and you're right. But the hilchase, not the Gemara Paskins, the actual halacha, meis, if the mother is nursing a baby, and this baby passed away, mutter, it'll be allowed for the mother to go and get married. But if the baby's still alive, but the mother stopped nursing, then she will have to wait the amount of time before she gets remarried. Mar Baravashi Yomar, Mar Baravashi says, I'll fill a mace. Even if the baby passed away, Nami Yosem. She still is going to have to wait. Why is this? And here the Gemara says a very sad thing. Dilme Kotlele, because if she knows that she's going to have to wait because of her baby to get married to her new husband, she may go and kill her baby to be able to go and get remarried. Vazlo Mitzvah, and she'll go and get married. And the Gemara says, Hava Ovda, such a story happened. But then the mother went and strangled and, and killed her baby. 
and uh, she wanted to go and get remarried. So therefore, even in a case where the baby died, we're not going to allow her to get remarried, so she shouldn't do this. So the Gemara says, but this halacha is not true though. Velayhi, we, we do not pass it this way, because that story that happened with the mother that killed her baby, this is, this is an unusual story, this, she, she's not normal. It's, it's for sure not the normal thing for a mother to kill a baby just because she wants to get remarried and she can't wait 24 months. We learned regarding hiring a woman to nurse a baby. So what are the conditions? What, what's, what's, uh, what exactly is she obligated to do? If they're hiring a woman to feed a son, to feed a baby. So now if she's hired to feed one son, so she should not be feeding another son. And also she should not feed another baby from, uh, from a friend. If you're hired for one baby, you have to be dedicated to only feeding this baby. Now, Pasca, Kima, if she's being given food, very little food to eat, she should make sure to eat a lot because she has to have enough to be able to have milk to feed the baby. And also, she should not eat anything that's not healthy for the baby, for the milk, for the quality of the milk for the baby. That's the Braise. Now the Gemara asks on what it says in this Braise. So what did it say? If she's feeding one son, she shouldn't feed another son, and also not a son of a friend. So the Gemara asks on this, Hash to b'no If the Braise says she shouldn't feed a brother, another son, so ben chaverta mibayit, does the Braise have to continue and say that she shouldn't feed a, a, a son from a friend that has nothing to do with this person? Of course not. So the Gemara says, actually, there would have been reason to say that the opposite is true. Ma'o de teime, I would maybe think to say, when it comes to her own son, so the mother has more rahmanas than her, so man so then you're going to feed this brother, another son, a lot of milk, and therefore it's going to take away from the son that you were hired to feed. But when it comes to a son from another friend, if you don't have extra milk, so then you wouldn't be feeding the, uh, the other, uh, the, the son of a friend. So maybe that should be allowed. So... So uh, again, ilav the havel the havel of meiser that is sorry I didn't read this right let me read it again ilav the havel of meiser lo have a if not for the fact that she had extra milk she wouldn't be feeding a son of a friend so maybe that should be allowed kamash malam that's what the brayse says that if you hire it for one son don't uh, feed another son and also don't feed even a friend's son as well now pasca kima the brayse said that if she was she's given a little bit of food echelas harba she should make sure to eat more she should eat a lot. The question is, who, who has to give her this food? Does she have to provide it for herself? Or does the one that hired her have to provide for her more food? Um, Rav Sheishe says, Mi the extra food that she has to eat because she's now nursing, she has to provide this for herself. Now the Braise said she shouldn't eat food that's not good for the milk. My Ninu, what are they? So I can't translate all these things that it said here in the Gemara. I didn't look at the uh, art scroll. But the Gemara here brings a bunch of different things that are uh, not good for a nursing mother. It could go in kishos, chaziz, different kinds of weeds and grasses or whatever, different things Thank like you. that. For ketanim, small fish, maybe like herring fish or things like that. But adama, some kind of earth that would be edible and she, it's not good for her for the milk. Abaya, Abaya says, I feel like kara, which I believe is pumpkins. Chavusha. Some kind of a, uh, I don't know, whatever. Okay. But Rav Papa Ama, I feel a crow, a kufra. Pumpkins or kufra. Kufra, I believe, is a kind of dates. Also, yes, yeah, small dates when they're not ripe yet. Rav Ashi Ama, Rav Ashi says, I feel a kimcha. Kimcha is this kutach that we mentioned before, this, this milchige sauce. And Vaharsana together with these little fish. Vaharsana, minayu, paski chalve, minayu. The Gemara says, some of these that we just mentioned will cause her to not have milk at all. And some of these things, if she would eat them, it will cause it to make the milk not, not uh, good quality, not drinkable. But therefore, she has to be careful with what she uh, eats.